Hello everybody. So today while I'm well helping out someplace with their computer stuff, I found in their server room an, something interesting. Now I had used one of these back in 2003, 2004, as by then I could get these cheaply, and I really liked it until it broke, but by then I had already had other models. So what am I talking about? A Palm Pilot. Now this is basically before there was iOS, there was this, and Windows Mobile. There was also Blackberries, but nobody had Blackberries, unlike today. This is pretty much, the device is small. It's basically like a phone today. The size is basically like your average smartphone, except a bit wider. This was a Palm Pilot, made by 3Com. This is a slightly later model, as the early models said US Robotics. The back of it here has 3Com logo, Palm Pilot Professional, which is the higher end version, which was $400 back in the day, which is how much an average smartphone is today, and it was made in the USA, unlike most devices today. There's also a reset switch, which you're going to need a lot if you actually use this, because these things are noiterous for crashing a lot. Right here, you've got the batteries. Now, you, these are double A's, just normal double A's. You have to have batteries in this thing or else you'll lose all your data because unlike most devices which were made recently, instead of using RAM and ROM like Windows Mobile, the device uses ROM, I mean, for the OS only, and the RAM is up in here, which it used for all storage because it was cheaper. And because of that, it's also kind of fast. The UI is basically the same as that of newer Palms, except it looks a lot different. You can't go to menu to change stuff. Instead, there is actually a separate memory program. On here, you have your stylus. Now, this is not an official stylus. This is one of those unofficial styluses which were popular back in the day. Stupid autofocus. Come on, focus. Okay, this is a... Pen. This is, um, can this autofocus even focus on here? Okay, this is a Pentopia pen from Pilot. And the front here screws off. Stupid autofocus. To show you the tip, just to show you how unreliable this thing is. These actually had to have a tip to reset the device. That's how unreliable these things were. Unlike newer phones, which you don't need that. You can just pop the battery. And this, this stylus is unique because it also rolls out to have a pen. If you tip this side out, it actually has a full featured pen. A full ballpoint pen. So if you have to write paper, you can do it easily. And now for your palm pipe. Now this thing is pretty old. These things were made in 1996 and have a backlight, which can drain the battery. The apps and OS I'm going to show first. By the way, when you touch, it makes a little click sound. And that and there's down here, there's also the overlay. Now you can go this is basically the back button or home button. This is the menu. You can't go to the menu in the main menu unlike the other ones. Calculator. Why they have a calculator button, I don't know. Unlike most phones now where that would be something else like back or home. And a search button, kind of like on Android or Windows Phone 7. You can find stuff. Stupid autofocus. Now, right here is buttons that take you to date book, address book, notepad, I mean to-do list, and notepad now. These were basically organizers. Businesses loved these because they could buy these up and sell these or give them to their employees. The size of these is were small too so they could easily do it. Now as for the hardware, the hardware is pretty well designed. However, the touchscreen you have to use a stylus and when you're writing instead of writing normally for example I'll make a new mode and show you. You can either tap the A, B, C button and type it in 
but you can't really type because these keys are so small you got to type in using a stylus a stupid autofocus okay like There's no autocorrect either, because back then they didn't know people would type the type with these a lot, so they didn't put autocorrect on these. Or you could write with graffiti, which, in my opinion, sucks because back then you would have to write like this or. You, I forget how to. I'm gonna go to the next line. Okay, I don't even know how to use this, so I'm just gonna new mode because I haven't used graffiti in years. I just use a touch keyboard. Okay, I'm gonna write something. Yeah, as you can see. It was kind of inaccurate. If you, it was horrible. I mean, you try to write, "Hi, mom." It'll write, "Hello, something, something." It's basically what autocorrect is today on the keyboard phones. If you, if your typing sucks, it'll just autocorrect everything to other stuff, which, in my opinion, sucked. The Palm Pilot Professional also came with some other stuff, such as mail, which was email, but you couldn't send it because, as we all know, the Palm Pilot had no modem and said there was a modem you could buy, but if you didn't have the modem, you could only sync it to your computer, so it wouldn't be instant, like with, let's just say, most phones today. There's the, there's direct, there's expense, which is basically like a dumbed-down version of Quicken for your, I, for your device, you can go to record, edit, options, menus, like on a phone, like on a PC, because at the time, they defined these to be like your home PC on the go. The screens aren't very accurate. Maybe it's the age of this compared to my other one. But then again, there's memory, which told you how much memory was on there. There's only one megabyte of storage on here which is incredibly tiny compared to newer palms and preferences which is familiar if you've had a palm before but let's you set up your modem stuff network you could actually set a, no a modem and network up and stuff because at the time this is what you'd set up but what really makes these stand out well it seems like you can't do very much with these if you don't install very any applications, what made these things stand out was that you could install applications. Plus, Palm updated the hardware and made many variations of the same hardware. They made like this Palm M500, which is the IBM WorkPad version. Not going to go into too in depth, but they later added. They removed the batteries. They the battery was in it now. They later added no RAM, instead of RAM you stored it on flash memory, they had SD cards, easier to get reset switches, infrared ports, rumble motors, cool stuff, you know, it's not available on the old one. Oh, and you can tap the top and all the, and they'll give you the menu. No need to tap the menu. Plus, when you turned on the screen it would actually just light up that and it would invert so you could load up all your programs and stuff plus they also changed the UI for it so instead of being like normal you could actually go into the menu but that's another story the other unique feature about these was you could connect them to a PC and install apps. Now, Palm Desktop was a program on the PC, as I'm going to show you right now. If you, they released, the, they came with a dock and a whole bunch of floppy disks, which you could use to sync your Palm up with. And it was called Hot Sync, and there was even a Hot Sync button on the cradle. 
on the back of your device, I mean compu computer, you could plug the co into the COM port, you could plug the cradle in, because at the time USB didn't exist, so you had to use slow, crappy serial. Now, I'm going to demonstrate installing an app on here. Stupid power save. Okay. I'm going to show you what Hot Sync could do. Now, first off, as you can see, it says here, local modem setup, because this is the old version that originally came with it. You could, you could sync it over serial or dial-up. There's also custom, you could set the thing up. Always available, only available. You set it serial, set your COM port, set that usual stuff. You could view hot sync logs in case you want to be sure everything synced up correctly since a lot of times the palms wouldn't sync correctly if you did stuff to them. Let me insert a floppy disk. And now I'm going to install all of these with the Palm Pilot. Now, you'd go to your Palm Pilot desktop folder, which is what it was called, and you'd love Palm Pilot install tool, or whatever this thing was called. In newer versions, they changed the name of it and how it worked, but I'm going to install one of the games, Hardball. Now I'm going to install Sub Hunt. I mean Mine Hunt and Sub Hunt. And I'm going to install some files I downloaded off the internet. I've copied them onto a floppy disk for this. And I'm going to show them you now. I'm going to install a notepad program, hack master, and a menu hack so when I tap the top it'll act like in newer versions. And now for one more program I'm going to go to. Now I'm just going to exit this. Now to hot sync it, what I gotta do is go to the palm and push the hot sync button when it's in the cradle. As you can see, it shows up on the screen. And on the screen right now, it's sending it over. Synchronizing datebook, to do, memo pad, my programs, all the files on here. While it installs Palm Pilot applications on here, it's installing it right now, as you can see. Now, you can sync the Palm Pilot up with newer versions of Palm Desktop, however, you can't use the newest one, or on Windows Vista, or 7. Now, as you can see, this was pretty common a lot of times, as when your device wasn't crashing, you'd get error messages. As you can see, I got a message. Well, it just basically says it installed. Don't know why it did that, but Palm it was actually a lot pretty glitchy back then. Now, I've already installed it. As you can see, I'm going to take this thing out. As you can see, looky here. I've got Hackmaster, the other program. As you can see, I'm going to turn on Menu Hack. Boom, I can talk to Top now, just like on Palm OS 3 and 4. And now, just to show you a game on here. Games on here never really use the touchscreen because, as we all know, this was before the iPhone came out and allowed touchscreen games. Well, Back then, it was easier to use buttons anyway, because all the game systems, like the Game Boy, had buttons, so... Let me just go to Hardball. 
the instructions. You can copy and paste, by the way. Okay, let's play. It's really blurry because, as we all know, this was before the Game Boy and other cool stuff came out. It's taking over the buttons below. And now I can play Pawn. As you can see, this was really cool at the time when I first got this. And then I could, you know, play these games when I was bored. And then this is what I did before my parents got me a DS. Or would even let me get a DS because for some reason they didn't want me to have a DS. But that's another story. This thing was really cool when it first came out. You can't do some other stuff that you can do on the newer ones, such as play mp3s or view full color images but for its time this was the thing to have I mean even having a basic one made you look cool yeah, I think I'm nearly done all in all if you're really into older tech like this this is a great addition to have to your collection or just fun to have I mean you look so nerdy having one of these. Congratulations, you have a new high score. Uh, my score sucks. And now for one more app I downloaded. You can download drawing app. You could download all sorts of apps that you could do all sorts of stuff on. And that is what made this thing unique, because at the time, sure there was the Newton, but unlike those cheap organizers, you could actually install all sorts of apps, not just games, but like finance apps, business apps, and that is why many of these palm type devices are still in use today. Sure, many of them are newer ones like the M500 series or, you know, even newer, such as they're still making PDA, there's a company making one called the PDA32. But eventually, Palm got killed by Windows Mobile and other operating systems since they were easier to use, worked more, more reliable. I mean, Windows Mobile didn't freeze up ever. I mean, while Windows Mobile was kind of unreliable compared to, say, Windows Phone 7, it didn't freeze up to the point where you had to reset all the time and then hard reset your device because of some problem. Trust me, I used to use Windows Mobile day to day. Anyways, thanks for watching, subscribe for more random videos, and see you later guys.